Hi friends, it's Sarah from rufflesandrainboots.com and today I am going to be sharing one of my favorite crafts so far this year, these adorable teapot gnomes. We're going to pretend that I remembered to boop their little noses, but if you would like to make them with me, just stick around. As always, please like this video so I know you're here crafting with me. So we're going to start out with just a few different supplies. I'm going to use a basic glue gun. This is a detailed tip. I'm going to use an X-Acto knife. I have these adorable little teapots I'll talk about in a minute, a two inch styrofoam ball, some fabric to cover up the craft paper you see on the bottom. I'm also going to be using the little noses and clay. Uh, Model Magic. So these are from the Hobby Lobby craft store. They're in their spring and summer lines. They've had them a couple of different times over the years. And we're just going to add on a couple little details to them, including this Model Magic. And I'm going to show you how I put together their hair using just a half of this styrofoam ball. For the hair, I'm going to be using scraps of faux fur, but you can use anything you'd like. So to get started, I am going to be using just a rolled up piece of craft paper. If you don't have this, you can use a paper roll and cut it down to the size you need for your teapot. Mine are pretty small. These are perfect tiered tray additions to tuck in anywhere in a bookcase. And we want to actually friction fit it. And so we're just going to build the gnome, glue on the little teapot top so it'll be easy to use over if you want to use these little teapots for something else. So I really wonkily cut the two inch styrofoam ball in half and that's gonna give me two. I started out with four inches wide by three inches tall and I just rolled it um, around a, my X-Acto knife actually, for the girl. And then for the guy, I added a half inch on the height. I end up cutting these down and I wanna say that because I ended up making a couple little changes and so just see what it looks like inside of your teapot before you know but before you measure everything out but here's the thing I messed up and I'm gonna show you the mess up so you know how easy it is to fix we're gonna start out by just gluing that uh, tube together again you can use a paper roll and cut it down but do make sure that you have enough width around it to fit your fabric okay and why I'm saying that is because I didn't want to glue these in permanently um, so I just wanted it all to friction fit so all I did is wrapped my little paper roll once it was glued and used this kind of like mauve color of fleece that I had left over from my Mother's Day gnome and I'm just gonna glue this on so if you don't remember this from another video I'm asked this a lot on how do I get my seams so tight with hot glue so I just thought I'd show you here what you're gonna do is glue right next to where you've ended and then press this in pretty far so just press it down right into that you can see the ridge and then you're gonna take a pair of really sharp scissors and go straight along that before the glue dries and then just press this seam again and that right there gives you a nice clean line even with something as thick as fleece so here I just cut off the excess and then popped a little bit of glue to make sure that this was going to fit very securely. And you can see it does. So I don't need to glue this in place. Okay. All right. So next up, I'm going to work on the hair. So you can see I have a lot of scraps. I keep all of the scraps. I usually use them around Christmas time to make napkin rings and ornaments, but I thought because I do get a lot of questions about scraps, I thought we'd just use a little tiny piece here. I'm gonna show you two different ways that I put together the hair and the beards for the little boy and girl. Now for the little girl, I'm gonna make pigtails. So all I need to do is cover up most of my styrofoam ball, and this is just a square. I'm gonna make sure that all of the uh, fur pile is going in one direction, and then I'm just gonna glue this on all the way around. For those of you who are wondering, I am using a Sure Bonder Detail Tip glue gun. It is my favorite glue gun uh, right now. It is one temperature, hot, and it, it does have a cord, uh, but it's still my favorite. All right, so once you have all of that down, you may have a little hole like I did right on the edge. And so I have a video on how to join faux fur. I will put that in the I card up above so that you can watch that if you're new to it. You can join them without any seams showing. 
So once you have all of your fur, we're just going to part it. And because we're using a square for this, it's super easy. You won't have any of the fur fabric backing showing. That's a mouthful. So we're just going to split the fur using, you can use anything, a comb, you can use your scissors, whatever, but you're just going to split the fur and give it a part, just like you would do with your hair. So I gave her a little bang tuft over the side. I grabbed two small clear plastic elastics from the Dollar Tree and I just put those in like little pigtails. So I am putting the actual elastic at the base of my styrofoam so that those will be dropping down and you won't see any of the styrofoam in case I didn't glue it down correctly. So here's one, so super easy. This is real time, right? This is not sped up. This one is sped up. We're just gonna repeat that. All right, now you've got it and it's just gonna sit on top right like this. And then we'll end up gluing the little teapot um, kind of skewed the little teapot top a little skewed all right so in order to do that all I'm gonna do is just add the glue directly to both the fleece and the paper and then pop that on sort of in the center I do want a little bit of an overhang because I'm going to use a model magic nose for her and if you don't have model magic don't worry I'll give you a couple options as well you can use the wood bead like I'm doing for the little guy or you can use polymer clay now I thought she ended up a little bit bigger than I wanted and that's because again I'm gonna give her some mittens and like little like hands hanging over the edge so all I did is I used my scissors to cut about a quarter of an inch off I flipped up the little tabs that I cut all the way around and then just trim that again this is all just friction fit so I can use these teapots again I think these teapots are about the cutest little thing since sliced bread or the cutest little thing since a boop on a gnome nose which I forgot to do. All right, so I'm going to now do the guy really quickly. So we're doing the same thing. And again, just account for the fabric to give you a nice fit. I am still working through using this four-way stretch black velvet fabric. So in case anybody wants some, let me know. I still have it on hand. Now for the guy, you see all those like tiny cuts of fur? Yep. I use those. So you see this really big piece I have that's going to hang down over the front. That's going to be my beard, right? So I'm going to make sure that that hangs down and then I have to cover the rest of this little ball. And so I just grab my X-Acto knife, cut it into, I mean, that's not even a square shape. It's just a, it's a mostly square shape. But the good news is, is that as long as you put all the fur pile facing the right way, you can again, attach all that stuff without, you know, showing any seams. I'll put that um, tutorial below for how to piece together faux fur with hot glue. It's pretty easy. So I just went around the entire thing and did this. I put one piece in the back facing down, the pile facing down, so that I could have a little tuft of hair in the back. And I called it my Franken hair because you cannot even tell that this isn't one piece. Um, but it's a great way, again, to use up those scraps when you're working on small projects. So I'm attaching his head to the body the same exact way. And then I'm going to glue down that front part, the beard, just so that it maintains its beard-like shape. He also was a little bit tall, so I ended up cutting about a quarter of an inch off of him as well. Again, this is gonna depend on what you want to do for yours. But if your tiered tray was a little bit tight, um, you have to you know take it off so I split the fur to the fabric backing on him and put a small one quarter inch wood bead there for the little girl I grabbed a little piece of model magic you can get this at the Dollar Tree and I made a round for the nose and then I'm just gonna do two parts of this because I wanted to see where I needed to put my mittens so I made two little tiny little balls and then just stuck them on to make sure I liked where everything was sitting maybe I had to cut her down again maybe I had to move her hair but once I had them I just popped her out because I don't want the clay to stick to her um, fleece and then I just marked two tiny little dots on the teapot where I needed to actually make and build my mittens so I rolled a nice chunk of log, it's about an inch, and then I cut it in half and then rolled two little balls for the mittens and stuck those directly onto my teapot. So I'm just going to press them in first, shape the front. You can see here. 
and then do the other one. And now I'm gonna do two things. The first is give it a thumb and I just used a simple skewer to make that delineation. And then I ran my finger and pushed the excess down and it made a little bit there. The reason I did that is because I want this to be really tight and secure because I have already friction fit the body. You have to let that dry for a few hours or overnight, but once it's done, it's time to assemble. Just glue on the nose, take off the mittens, glue those on, and then put glue right on the little teapot hat. Boop. You don't even have to do that. If you want to hold it on with a pin, you can actually poke a pin right through all of that and have the teapot not glued on as well. That's it for this quick one. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. I sincerely appreciate you being here. Please like, share, and subscribe. And here is a fun DIY Gnomes Crafts playlist.